around Dodge City enter the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Heavy, Matt? Oh, somehow it was easier carrying him up to your office and back down, Doc. Where are you going to put me, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, well, on the couch here, I guess. Uh, uh, you'll be all right there, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. This will be fine. Good. I'm sure sorry I'm so much trouble. Chester, next time, try to land on just one foot. Even if you break a leg. I know. A man's in a terrible fix when he sprains both ankles. Mm, he sure is, Doc. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what you're going to do. You're going to stay right there on that couch, and you're going to sleep there, too. Maybe Doc and I'll bring you in something to eat every day or two. Oh, no. It's better than you deserve. I know. I've been saying over and over to myself, Chester, you fool, you. <clears throat> well... The wages of sin, Chester. <laughs> you were lucky to get off as easy as you did. <clears throat> the way I heard it. Uh, come on, Chester. Tell us what really happened. Huh? <laughs> but I did tell you. I was uh, looking out this second-story window, admiring the view, so to speak. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, I fell. That's all right onto the street. He didn't say whose window, Chester. In Texas, Doctor, a gentleman don't mention such things. You ain't in Texas, well, sometimes I wish you'd never laugh. <laughs> like now? Yes, like now. <laughs> Many a reputation's been ruined by just such loose talk that you're making, Doc. Never mind, Doc Chester. He's jealous, that's all. Oh, jealous? Uh, putting tracks in a man's yard? <laughs> Not me. Not by a long side. Why, no, sir. Oh. Uh, good morning, Marshal. Well, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Oh, there's Chester. <laughs> Heard about you, Chester. I heard... Never mind what you heard, Torp. Chester just got thrown from a horse, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. What is it you want here, gentlemen? Yeah. All right, you tell him, Summers. Well, Marshal, it's about tomorrow night. Oh? So what about tomorrow night? Well, you know, it's the roundup. The sales season's over. There'll be a thousand cowboys celebrating in Dodge. Well, they always do at the end of the season. What about it? Well, there's going to be more of them this year, and there'll be a lot of homesteaders in town, too. It's going to be worse than ever. Well, I expect that. There could be a lot of trouble, Marshal. <laughs> yeah, there could be, Summers. Just what is it you want? Well, we've talked it over, and uh, we want you to get a lot of good, tough men together, maybe about uh, 20 of them, and deputize them. That way, there won't be any trouble. Yeah. That's what you want, is it? Yes, we do. Look, Summers, my job's to keep the peace around here, and I'm going to do it, but I'll do it in my own way. Oh, I know, Marshal. Now, you but... turn 20 deputies loose in that crowd looking for trouble, and they're going to find it. As soon as the wild ones heard about it, they'd bunch up and shoot it out with every one of them. Why, it'd turn into the worst slaughter dodge has ever seen. I think that's about the most fool idea I ever heard of. Yeah, no reason for you to talk like that, Marshal. I think it's a good idea. I sure don't want my place wrecked just because you're mule-headed. You're a gambler, Torp. So? So you can take your chances along with everybody else. Now, if you don't want that, then close your place up tomorrow night. Well, lose all that Texas money? <laughs> That's not likely. Now, we're not all gamblers, Marshal. They can wreck my dry goods store just as fast as a gambling house once they get started. And it's up to you. That's right. It is up to me. And we're going to leave it that way. Then uh, you won't do anything. I'll do everything I can. 
I don't know, Marshal. Look, Summers, I know you've got your doubts about me. That's natural. Some people think I'm too lax with front streets. Some think I'm too severe. But that's the way of it in any town. If a peace officer does his job well, he pleases nobody. Marshal, we didn't come here for a lecture. What did you come for, Torp? Maybe you had in mind to help me pick out those deputies. Is that it? A matter of fact, I could, Marshal. Yeah, sure, sure. In a couple of hours, yours would be the only tables open for play. No, that's not what it's I... It's been have. done before, Torp. Is that too, Torp? We're not going to take his word for anything, are you? I don't know. But anyway, he won't listen to us, so it's his responsibility. Come on, men, let's get out of here. I hope you can handle it, Marshal. Goodbye, gentlemen. That torp is no good. He is just plain no good, Miss Dillon. Well, I know one man that got skinned at his place, and torp gave him back $20 so as he wouldn't be broke. Huh? Just how much did this man lose, Doc? Oh, five or six hundred, they said. Uh, then he, uh... Oh, yeah, I see what you mean, man. I'm sure not going to be much good to you tomorrow night, Mr. Dillon. No, you can watch the jail right here, Chester. I know, but you just got to get somebody to help you out on the street. At least one man, anyway. You can't be everywhere at once. Yeah, but tomorrow night, Dodge will be overrun with trail boys and homesteaders, all looking for satisfaction. No, I wouldn't ask any man to face that. I know a few fellows who'd do it, and so do you, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, maybe, but I wouldn't ask anybody. How many were killed last year, man? I don't remember. Well, I do. Six, that's what. We buried them all in the saddle blankets. All except one. I remember he didn't even own a blanket. (laughs) Why, then he was sure out of luck all the way around, wasn't he? Come on, Doc. Let's go get some dinner. All right. We'll bring you a piece of bread, Chester. Maybe. I want a steak. Rare. (laughs) How come you're so hungry, Chester? Were you in such a hurry to get over there last night you didn't take time for supper? Mr. Dillon... I will answer no more questions about last night, and that is final. <laughs> well, we'll bring you something. Yeah, I don't know if we should, though, Matt. A man can think about his sins better on an empty stomach. Close the door, mm. will you? <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, I had Mr. Hightower print up some signs for me with a few rules that I made up for the roundup. They were fair and reasonable, and I hoped they'd be accepted without question. The principal restrictions were that there was to be no shooting, and no reckless riding in the streets. That afternoon, I went from saloon to saloon and left a sign at each one. The Texas Trail was my last stop, and there I sat down with Kitty for a short beer. Town's beginning to fill up, Matt. Yeah, it'll be swamped to the dashboard by dark. You, um... Expect trouble tonight? <laughs> I always expect trouble, Kitty. Yeah, I know. Matt, I heard something. Yeah? I heard Torp and a few of his men cut cards last night. So? I don't know who it came out for, but Low Man is supposed to kill you. Oh. Uh, when? Tonight, I suppose. Why is Torp after you, Matt? Uh, Torp says he wants an open town, Kitty. But what he's really after is somebody who'll close down every game but his. Mm. Who's this, man? What? Rough-looking traveler headed this way. What? What? Well, I'll be. <laughs> Why, it's Zell Matlock. Matt Zell! Zell, you old badger. How are you? <laughs> Zell, it's been a long time. Hey, a long time. Man. Here, come on over here. Sit down. Sure. Uh, I'd like for you to meet Kitty. Kitty, this is Zell Matlock. This Hi. is Kitty. Uh, how Glad you to know you, ma'am. <laughs> Just rode into Dodge an hour ago. Yeah, it's your first time in a Zell. Hey, would you like a beer? Huh? Don't mind. Good. I uh, aim to get drunk tonight, but before I got started, I thought I'd look up the peace officer and shoot him. I'd be sure to tangle with him before the night's out. I always figure it's safer to do it sober. So <laughs> he, he half means that. Kid. So I asked around and found out the man's name is Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. I've seen it all now. Well, I hope you're not disappointed. I'll, I'll tell you, Miss Kitty, I knew Matt Dillon before he got civilized. 
Why, we had to tie his leg up to give him a haircut when he came to town. <laughs> Don't you believe a word that he says, kid. Yeah, the wilder the coat, the better the horse, Matt. Mm-hmm. Well, you was all right. The only trouble with you was that fool honest streak you always had. <laughs> Are you rich now, Zell? Uh, nobody's rich on the Mexican border. Land of sunshine and pinna beans. Now, I hired out to a general over in Chihuahua three years ago. I lost 20 pounds and was lucky to get back at all. Well, haven't you learned to stay out of Mexico yet? No, I met the man he wanted me to shoot and turned out to be a better fellow than the general. So I told him I'd been hired to kill him and then rode for the border. The general lost three soldiers who tried to stop me from swimming the Rio Bravo. <laughs> uh, you must be pretty handy with a gun, Zell. Yeah, just fair, ma'am. But when I take my gun out, I go right ahead and use it. Some people stop and think for half a second. Um, there's a roundup in Dodge tonight. Matt's handling it alone. Kitty, what the... Yeah, no, no, hold it, hold it, man. I heard about it. I heard all about it, and that's why I'm here. To say hello and uh, sign on for a night's pleasure. Give me a star, Matt. I've killed on the side of the law before. <laughs> I don't believe that in any way. I... I don't want any killings here. No, I was joshing you, Matt. I know what you want. It's true. I was sheriff in Tascosa for six months. You what? Yeah, it's in the record. Well, they caught up with me there, but I've already done such a good job taming the place that the governor pardoned me. <laughs> I won't kill anybody tonight that don't need killing. All right, all right. I believe you so. But uh, I won't ask any man to come in when it's as rough as this roundup may be. Well, you didn't ask me. Any other objection? Well, uh, the men don't know you around here, so no telling how they'd take to a stranger. First night I ran to Ascosa, nobody knew me either. I'm not green at this business. Yeah, but man. it's my job. Why should you get mixed up in it? <clears throat> well, I I also heard somebody's planning a party for you tonight. Well, you did, huh? I've owed you something for... A long time, Matt. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. Oh, it has. You got no right not to let me pay it back a little. Now, there's a chance to. <laughs> yeah, you're just as crazy as you ever were. <laughs> that's better. Well, come on, let's go find me a badge before it gets dark. <laughs> sure, nice to have met you, Miss Kitty. Well, good luck, Zell. I'll see you later, Matt. Yeah, sure. So long, Kitty. <laughs> Sure been a long time coming to Dodge, Mr. Matlock. What do you mean, Chester? Well, I've heard Mr. Dillon mention you a lot, but the way he talked, I wasn't never sure you were still alive. <laughs> oh, well, I was never sure either, Chester. You know, Zell isn't the most cautious man I ever knew. You think being a U.S. Marshal isn't asking for an early grave, man? Oh, maybe. But at least it's a way to do some good before you die, whether folks think so or not. No, men like Torp, that's all. Oh, no, Chester. Even good men have got a strange twist that makes them suspect any man paid to handle the bad element. Hey, you just can't help thinking that some of its dirt is rubbed off on him. And I never thought about that before, Matt. Sure, how it was in Tascosa. They wanted me there, all right, but they wanted me to uh, keep my distance, too. It makes a man kind of lonely. Yeah. They just don't know what's good for them, that's all. Uh, Instead of a real lawman, they'd rather hire some killer with a lot of noxious carved on his gun. Well, there are plenty of them around. You sure are. Bragging kind. I never did like a man who has to notch his gun to keep his courage up. Yeah. My goodness. Look yonder. Mm-hmm. The street's about full already and it isn't even dark yet. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, give yeah. me a hand here, will you? We'll move Chester's well, couch away from the window well, there. All right. There, that should do it. Yeah, you'll be safer here, Chester, in case somebody gets it in mind to shoot up the jail. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. I can watch both doors from here. Uh, just hand me my gun belt, if you will. Oh, yeah. There you are. Well, come on, Zell. Uh, Chester, I'll get somebody at the Dodge House to fetch up some supper, huh? Thank you, sir. And, and good luck, both of you. So long, Chester. I see you, Chester. Well, how are we working, Matt? Uh, I tell you, Zell, you take this uh, side of the street. Uh, I'm going up to the Dodge House, and then I'll be on the other side somewhere. All right. 
Oh, say, you mind if I go back later and get that Spencer carbine of yours? Make a mighty handy club if I don't have to use it any other way. <laughs> sure, it's yours. Yeah. Who they got there? That fella on their shoulders. Oh, that's Mr. Hightower. He runs the printing press here. Shall, shall we stop it? Oh, no, no. They're just carrying him into the Longhorn to make him stand some drinks. Oh. They like Hightower. They won't hurt him. Well, I guess that sort of officially opens this here roundup, huh? Yeah, I guess it does. Well, I'll leave you here, Zell. Yeah, sure. Sure, man. And, uh, Zell, I, uh, <laughs> I, I want to thank you for what you're doing tonight. I ain't done nothing yet, but I'll do plenty if someone shoots you in the back. <laughs> I can promise that. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later. Sure, Matt. <laughs> Return for the second act of Gun Smoke in just a moment. But first, Sunday nights, you are cordially invited to escape via CBS Radio. Yes, every weekend for drama that will take you right out of this world, listen for Escape at the Star's Address. Also, tomorrow evening, CBS Radio brings you Lionel Barrymore on your Sunday night playhouse. Now, for the second act of Gun Smoke. <laughs> When I came out of the Dodge house, Front Street was so full that if anybody had been shot, the crowd would have carried him along like one of the living. I had a feeling that the word was out about Torp and his bunch cutting cards to see who'd make a try for me, and that the crowd knew it and was waiting for it. I stood for a while with my back against Summer's dry goods store, and then I left the street and cut down an alley thinking to change my position with as much irregularity as possible. I was passing the back door of the Texas Trail when I heard the first shot of the night. I entered the saloon from the rear and made my way into the crowd. Yeah. It's all right, Marshal. There's no fight. It's not all right, Sam. I made a rule that there'd be no shooting for any reason. All right. Who fired that shot? Oh, it's outside. It was Torque, Marshal. He, he just took a shot at the moon, that's all. Yeah. All right, Torp. Put the gun away and come over here. I'm bothering nobody, Marshal, excepting maybe you. Stand back, everybody. I said that's enough, Torp. No, it ain't, Dylan. This time I got the jump on you. You ain't pushing me no more. Torp's bullet just grazed my arm. Then I put one in his head and another in his chest. And at the same time, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a figure with a gun in each hand move out of the shadow of the alley and turn toward me on the boardwalk. And without really looking, I dropped him with one shot. And then I faced the crowd and waited for the next move. But for some reason... None came. Marshal? Yes, Summers. That uh, man you just shot, Marshal. Torp got what he deserved. Yes, I know. It's the other one that so I... So did he. Marshal, you'd better go take a look at that man. He's dying. Who is he? I don't know him, Marshal. But you do. What? He's wearing a star. No. No. Oh, Zell. Zell. Matt. I think that did it. No, Zell. No. It's my fault. I crossed the street a while back. Left the carbine with Chester. It's no fault of yours. Matt. That old, oh, there you are, old man. Uh, how, how is he? Oh. Oh, oh, goodness. No use, Doc. Thanks. So I... I now, don't... listen. Listen to me, Matt. You did right. The only thing you could do... 
it was my fault. I shouldn't have crossed over and come up behind you. Anyway, Matt, I ain't been living on my own time ever since that day you pulled me out of the mob in Almogordo. I never thanked you for that. I guess I never will now. Matt? So long. I'll find someone to carry him over to your office, Matt. No. I'll carry him. What happened? I heard the shooting. Put a blanket on the floor there, Doc. Yeah, sure. Yeah, spread it out right here. He's dead, Chester. Well, who shot him, sir? I shot him, Chester. I didn't know it was him. I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon. It sounds like they're going to hoorah the town after all, Matt. Sure does. No. No, they're not. It's going to be kind of hard to stop now, isn't it, Matt? Maybe. You taking a shotgun, Mr. Dillon? Matt, why don't you just let them fight each other? What are you going to do? I'm going to close Front Street. You're going to close... Oh, no, the party's over in Dodge. Mr. Dillon, you can't do that. There'll be trouble if I don't. The mob's tasted blood now. They'll shoot you sure as I'm laying here. Will they? All right, I can't stop you, but I sure do wish I could go with you. Yeah, Matt, I'll go. Maybe if they see me, they won't be so quick. Thanks, but this isn't your job, either one of you, but thanks. Close up and turn out your lights. What? You heard me! Now listen to me! Broad Street's closed! Now get out of here and go home, all of you! My home is in Texas, mister. If you ever had one. I ain't going home tonight. Not tonight, I ain't. Don't interfere, fella. You got no chips in this deal. I could buy in, mister. <laughs> Now I'll use this shotgun for what it was meant on the next man. Well? All right, Sam, close it up. Yes, sir. Close, put out your lights. Huh? You heard me. Lock the place up. I know. I ain't going to do it. Now, don't tell me what you're going to do. All right, boys. We're closing up. That took care of the Texas Trail and the Longhorn. And I moved on through the Oasis and the Olifraganza, and then to the smaller bars that infested the outskirts of town. When I came back up Front Street, the crowd had thinned, its fever broken. I'd left Torp's place for the last, thinking to give his men a chance to get out of town before they faced me. It was a gambling hall on the same side of the street as the jail. And when I reached it and entered, there weren't more than a dozen men there. And most of them stepped quietly past me out into the street. What was left didn't seem to count for much. Looking for somebody, Marshal? You a friend of Torp's? Well, yes, I was. Why? Who else here worked for Torp? Everyone's gone, Marshal. They heard you were all riled up and they left. Then you're alone. 
And still in bad company. I wouldn't ordinarily take that. Well, go ahead, mister. You're calling it. No. Not now. What's stopping you? No, if it's the shotgun... Now, does that make it easier for you? I haven't been looking for you, Marshal. You were in on the cut, weren't you? Torp's dead, Marshal. Isn't that enough? Torp! Mister, one of the best men I ever knew died tonight. And I killed him. I'm not a gunman, Marshal. You wouldn't be proud killing me. What does a man like you know about pride? Now, you get out of Dodge and you get out fast. But I don't... You want to die in this place right now? No. No, I'm leaving. All right, hurry. Hurry. The rest of the night, I walked the dark, empty street alone. And just before dawn, I got a spring wagon and loaded Zell onto it. A couple of hours later, I buried him out by the Arkansas in a little grove of cottonwoods. Maybe I should have put a marker on his grave, but I didn't. What I did instead, I did partly out of scorn for the kind of men Zell said have to notch their guns to keep their courage up. And partly as a kind of a cross that I'd bear from now on. So instead of a marker on his grave, I took out my gun and I cut a single notch on it. Smoke under the direction of Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Boehner and Harry Bartell, with Lawrence Dobkin, Lou Krugman, and James Nusser. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke is heard by our troops overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen to CBS Radio for Spring Byington as December Bride. And say, after you hear December Bride tomorrow night, listen for the important announcement about its new night and time on CBS Radio. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, Amos and Andy are here every Sunday on the CBS Radio Network.